If you want news or rumors that appeal, welcome to the dust. If you want news or rumors that appeal, welcome to the dust. Hey, welcome back to the Dusty Wheel. I'm your host, The Keeper, and this is our live call and talk show all about the Wheel of Time. And today, we're back with a special episode. Yes, that's right, we're here with a, a cast interview with someone I know, I know those of you watching, love and adore. So without further ado, let me welcome our award-winning guest, <laughs> actor, Kate Fleetwood. Kate, it's awesome to have you here. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. It's lovely to be here. Thank you for asking me. Absolutely. I, I love having you here. I, and I, and I, I kind of mean that very seriously. Uh, book fans have opinions about Leandrin, strong opinions mm -hmm. about Leandrin. And, uh, but I know this for sure. They love, love, love what you've brought to Leandrin. They, they, they are almost upset with you, <laughs> which is they, they, they hate how much they, you've made them love this character. So, uh, oh, well, I, that's really lovely. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know, don't know what to say. Get <laughs> well, maybe let's start there. Just, I mean, that's something as book fans, I know everyone's curious about. Have you dipped mm. your toes into the books themselves? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, I didn't know the series at all before I auditioned for it. And, um, uh, and one of the best things about being an actor is that you get invited to in, uh, sort of delve into new worlds, new horizons and new literature, new genres, etc. And and I started to get involved in this and I just started to, well, it's such a huge, sprawling, wide, stretched sort of, it, yes, it's sort of an object. It's, it's sort of like, it's like, a, it's like a hall of mirrors. You, know, you look at it one way, it's different and another, another way. And I just, I find, I find it's kaleidoscopic sort of, the, the scale of it just brilliant and it's so in, so rich for an, as, as actors to come to that kind of source material and so I have dipped my toe but it's coincided with COVID and homeschooling and sort of getting involved in that and then my eyesight failing so <laughs> so I have got the end of the second book and uh, I will continue on my Kindle now I'm getting old but um yeah it's been it's been amazing to sort of I know we all feel this um, without you know to a man and a woman um that we that you start to sort of excavate these characters through the text that we're given and 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 you can parallel that with the books and the companion which has been a great help <laughs> and um you, just coming to a, a a new title like this has been fantastic and i i mean i you know read lord of the rings when i was younger and and i you know been in one or two other fantasy sort of type shows and but what I love about this is that I think it's it's is its breadth and its stretch and it feels like it's sort of constantly stretching as it, like it's rubber and then it sort of moves and expands and transforms into something new and it sort of tr transmogrifies a bit and I, I and it's very spiritual and and romantic and and I can see why everyone falls in love with it and I hope that the fans who are coming to it fresh. We'll we'll do that the same with the TV series, but you know, inshallah. 
<laughs> well, you've definitely added a lot of nuance to a character that maybe on, in the book itself wasn't as you know, like fleshed out a bit. And you've, you've brought that, which has, uh, which has created some consternation among fans. <laughs> because <laughs> all of a sudden, uh, Leandrin's more complicated. So is there something about Leandrin's past that you're aware of as far as that helped you kind of find her motivation? <clears throat> well, I mean, not, I don't, you know, don't want to give any spoilers away, but we'll learn more in season two. But, but certainly coming to it as an actor, as a, someone who's trying to create a character from the beginning, you know, as a performer, then I look back at the, the source material and what I can glean. And from what I can tell is that if she came from a sort of poor background, very, uh, not similar to Moraine, that that she had this spark. So I'm looking at it sort of like, well, if she's this type of person, what, why is she doing the thing she's doing? And I saw her background as she could have gone off with that compulsion and the spark that she had to become something different. She could have gone off to be a wilder, for instance. But she chose to go to the White Tower. Now, that's a political act. You know, she wants to be in the thick of it. She wants to be in Congress or at the Senate. And and so so for me, it was a sort of a, she's like a sort of, a, it's a political, she wants to be at the table. Now, whatever table that is. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but she, she goes to the heart of, where she thinks she can be effective. Now she often misfires, as we know, um, but her motivation is to have a voice. And so if she comes from a background where she maybe didn't have that voice or she wasn't taken seriously, and she, but she wanted to have an effect, a political effect, then I see her as somebody, I don't see her as a villainous character. You know, most actors who play villains will say that, that's, you know, obvious. But if you imagine that she's going to, you know, she's going to the Vatican or she's going, yeah. I see it sort of, it's a bit like a cult, isn't it? You know, you, <laughs> you go, you know, you go to it and you try and create, you know, you want to have a voice in that. And so I don't, I've always seen her as a, I mean, like I say, she often misfires, <laughs> but I look at the scripts and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm lucky that I get, you know, I, I get lots to, to play with. And that's been a really amazing thing. And I, you know, a little gesture and I think, oh, what can I do with that gesture that's going to enrich this story as much as I can? And maybe sort of maybe send people off on uh, maybe a little red herring there, a little <laughs> bit of McGuff, McGuff in there. And that's the gift, you know. OK, well, I, gotta, to, I, I, have this... to, I have to talk about one of these. I have to I have to bring one. Oh, go out, ahead. You know? OK, yeah. so yeah. there's a scene in episode five where you're speaking, where Landon's speaking with Moraine in, a, in one of the halls. And during the scene, she reaches up and kind of tucks her hair behind her ear, almost touches mm -hmm. her cheek afterwards. Fans reacted extremely strongly to this moment. <laughs> was, that, uh, it, was that kind of intimate tension something like part of Leandrin's strategy with Moraine? Or was that illuminating something deeper, some deeper feeling that uh, she has, or something else entirely? All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> um well a scene like that you know they're obviously you know they came to the tower not not you know moraine was took less time to be accepted but it's not far off you know leandrin's not far off um and they would have there's this tension between them which we which was starting to be created and and so let's sort of imagine that there was maybe a bit of a a bit of a frisson or maybe that was uh, I don't know whether it came to any conclusion but it certainly finished whatever happened and in that scene it's actually a very small scene on the page um you know when you when I as an actor go to a scene like that and there is it, sometimes those gestures are written and sometimes you invent them and in that case it was written and I look at it and I go well how do I leap into that gesture because it's a very strong gesture as an actor you know to do that across a camera it's a big it's a big gesture and very pregnant and um so i'm looking i'm trying to track it back so you know in that scene she's saying you've been away for two years and in and it just just that line itself you know you've been a, a surprise you even know where your bedroom is 
<laughs> you know, it's so yeah. complicated. She's saying, you know, things have changed since you were away, or yeah. I'm still here. I've been counting the days since you've been gone. Um, I'm now here. It's so complex what's going on there. And I think, you know, that's that's how Leandrin sort of functions, is that she she's a provocateur. And again, it often misfires and she but she wants to be understood and she often does too much to be understood. So so as to be completely misunderstood. Well, but, that that almost comes back to bite her a bit in episode that's six. Right. right? Uh, oh, yes. She yes. she's there. She is that provocator in the in the hall. Uh, mm. as Moraine and Lan come walking by and she starts saying, well, mm. I know who Matt Cawthon is. I know who, I've heard of all these names. Now, in that moment, obviously, Moraine kind of hits back, right? She mm. she threatens uh, Leandrin a bit here about a man in North Harbor. I'm kind of curious about this individual is afterwards, after she says this, uh, is Leandrin more concerned about this man's fate or is she more concerned about her own plans? I think you'll have to find out next season, <laughs> Matthew. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, I mean, you will discover that. Okay. But um, yes, which is exciting. And I hope, I hope people will look forward to it. Um, I think at that moment, yeah. one of the things I was playing or playing with was that she'd gone too far. You know, I think Moraine was saying, had played quiet graciousness and she she had the bigger picture in mind and you know Leandra at that point may know she hasn't joined all the dots up she's doing it in situ yeah and 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 it's the moment the cat says no you know Moraine, Moraine says no stop playing now it's because it's not no she so she berates her and I think in that moment it's like the the, the little girl in Leandra says oh I've gone too far does Leandrin believe? Because she's been trying. That, yeah. Does she believe Moraine would do that? I think. I think she's yes, possibly. I mean, if you, okay. yeah, but the language that they all use in the tower is all so. There's so much double speak, isn't there? Everyone's playing on subtextual, yeah. political planes. You know, it'd be like being in the Senate or, or the or you know, or yeah. who? How are you going to vote? You know, it, you just don't know. There's no chief whip. You know, there's no whip. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you know, you know, it, it's very political, isn't it? In those corridors of power, and it, it's lovely that some of those scenes are played in those corridors because that's where those those things are happening. You know, the corridors of power. Yeah, I love that you said that. It, it was such. These are all really intimate scenes, and mm. so that subtext hadn't really hit me as much. I mean, obviously, I know they're in the White Tower. But the fact that as you speak about it, you know, I'm thinking of what's in the hall, but you saying corridors of power adds. Yeah, uh, these yeah. are these are where yeah. these little these things, these clandestine things happen. And it's great. So it's great. The scene that we did in the in the White Tower with everybody there in, yeah. in episode, uh, the opening to that and um, to episode six. And because it's great because it gives everybody the muscular, there's a muscular nature to the you know to the performing space and so it's just it gives that kind of heightened quality and but then you you get to sort of go and slide into the corridors where you can be a little bit more sort of intricate and, and <laughs> gossamer and gossamer about those things yeah. and um yeah that's what's brilliant about the show for us as players is that we're going into these extreme uh the scale and then into these very tiny things and I, I I'm always excavating looking for the friction in, in the scene you know where's the scratch I think for any actor that's the thing you're looking for in a part yeah. you know not uh, saying oh hi how are you but, oh you've been away two years oh how was it? it was great was it oh great see ya <laughs> you know that you know there's right. no conflict there but I'm also with a gesture like that like touching her face I'm looking for the moment you how do I lift into it so the the gesture of going in is as much as the gesture itself and the gesture of being recoiling from it is just as much as as deep as the gesture itself and her yeah. reaction or rejection you know there's all those sort of dynamics going on and and it's fun to really fun to play oh yeah and it's the, the same the, with night yeah I was the same thing, with the naive camp? you know oh yes well <laughs> similar you know so yeah. many things going on I was going to say, the way the camera was with Moraine, as you do step into that, you are close. And as a, as a viewer, you want, to, <laughs> you want to step back a little bit. So it's, it's, a really, it's really well done. As part of that oh, conversation dear. with her, well, I, maybe let me ask the question this way. 
As Leandrin, if someone in the White Tower said to you, the persimmons are in season, what would you, repl- <laughs> what would you reply to them? In Britain, we say persimmons. Persimmons. The persimmons are in season. <laughs> what would you reply to that person if persimmons. they said that to you? <laughs> the persimmons. And so I say, oh, quick, let's go and get a knife and get plates and have some. Um, yeah, the persimmons, yes. Persimmons, are you, I think it's just a British thing. Okay, are, are you, are you aware my, of all the fans kind of reacting to that statement? Well, my niece is, my niece. Is, um, her mother is from San Francisco and we had lunch a few weeks ago and she was like, Annie Katie, you said it's, you said it's pers- persimmon. How, how did you say persimmon? And I was like, persimmon, Lauren, it's persimmon. And um, I think it's just a British thing. Yeah. Okay, that's because uh, a lot of fans want to know or they're obviously curious if that was some kind of coded language. But No, no, no. I think okay. she was just trying to get her into the garden. Okay. And, and, you know, you're just saying, uh, she's, She's saying, I'm your friend. She talks about chicken the first time she sees my niece. You know, there's all these little patterns that you build and, and you see in the, in the text, you know. She's saying, come, I'm your friend. I'm, I'm soft and I'm, I'm like a soft fruit. You know, you can trust me. I'm, I, I'm nurturing. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to nurture you. You know, it's a, tr- it, it's, yeah. and that, you know, that's, that's a good relationship for her to start building and, and it becomes something, you know, um, more interesting as well. Is a, I mean, speaking of, of Nynaeve, uh, is, is Leandrin intent on mentoring Nynaeve? She kind of says that to Moraine and, uh, you know. Yeah, I think she's she, probably she, looking, yeah, she's probably looking, she's, you know, she's fishing all the time, isn't she, for re- recruits. But yeah. she obviously sees there's something in Nynaeve that as catches Moraine as Moraine as well not Moraine, Moraine as well. And, and I think that's all, she's always looking to score points with Moraine. Yeah. And if it turns out that she's scoring points with someone who's actually quite fascinating and interesting herself and could be of use then uh, for her self-esteem and for, for, for her, you know, her, politi- her politics, her ideology, then, then it's win-win, isn't it? Yeah. But again, she's always misfiring. <laughs> so she knows that I think Nynaeve is suspicious of her, but um, but she's going to keep going. But she's she's just persistent, isn't she? She just persists, and then and then Moraine wraps her knuckles at the end. You know, but she's <laughs> she gets her fingers burnt, doesn't she? She does. But, um, I, she's going to try. <laughs> I like I like how you've kind of talked about his misfiring. There's an almost an awkwardness to it. Yes, uh, that's it. It's awkward, and she's on her like. So if I think of her as being a, a child on her own in Tarabon, who leaves who leaves her poor family. You know, she's obviously not had the structure there. She goes to the White Tower and it's, you know, and then she chooses an Aja that doesn't have warders and is all sort of very isolatory. And so she, yeah. she, she really wants to be part of the game and part of the conversation, but she just, she's just slightly off the track, isn't she? And it's fascinating. And I think that's why maybe how she becomes more human to the, to the audience because we all do that. <laughs> we can all slightly misfire or not quite be on the track. And and our and her quest to be understood, you know, often leads to her being more misunderstood than ever. So she's, yeah. you know, she's she's very interesting. But she's sort of an extreme. You know, I see her as an extremist, one way or the other. You know, sometimes I think of her as AOC, and sometimes I think of her as Sarah, Sarah Palin. You know, she's sort of she's either she's either very very extreme that way or very extreme that way and you know she's not very centrist <laughs> yeah yes that's a that's a great way to put it i, I want to step back a little bit from like being in the story I, fans have expressed how much they've loved your lady macbeth and oh. uh you know did that role help at all in channeling leandrin um not really they're very different i mean they're very they're very different I mean, you often get echoes, you know, you'll get echoes yeah. in your mind and and they all probably knit together in one way or another. Um, but, you know, they're, they're, and also the process was completely different. You know, we made that originally as a stage play and we yeah. did that. And by the time I'd filmed it, um, I, we, I think I performed it in London and in New York on Broadway 280 times or something oh, wow. <laughs> Some, yeah. yeah more more and 
it's a different thing but yeah there are always echoes probably there's a ghost of each character i suspect in in each performance yeah um not not that one would like to repeat oneself but um right, right. but you know as an actor you have to accept that you know and i willingly accept um that you know you are a flavor you have a flavor you know and that's okay <laughs> Sure. But sure. I'm not very like them in real life. Just, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> well, I, well, I yeah. wish I could keep this conversation going on. I, uh, there's so many more questions. These fans, they've, they've loved your performance. Uh, just want you to know, I, I can see them in chat uh, talking about, Aww. just wanting you to know how much they've appreciated what you brought well, to Leander. I Leandrin. appreciate them. So, yeah. No, I appreciate all your support, all of you. It's amazing. It's, we all feel it. It's great. It's really wonderful. Well, uh, thank you. I hope I hope you'll uh, we'll see you back here at the Dusty Wheel sometime in the future. I'd love to have you back and uh, keep this conversation mm. kind of going. But thank you for making time today, Kate. I really appreciate it. No, great pleasure. Great pleasure. Thank you, and good luck with everything, everybody. Well, yeah, and, and thank you for those of you who are watching out there. Thank you for being here, taking a break from your midday or your evening, I guess, depending on where you're at, and for being here at the Dusty Wheel. And remember, tonight we'll be back talking about season one, doing a little tell-all with some of my friends who've been covering the news for the last two years. So be back here tonight. Thank you once again, Kate, for being here. And thank you all, as we say around here, good afternoon from the Dusty Wheel and smash to black. You went right to kill it. Look at you, you're all ready. You're just done. I mean, this is like, uh, this is really the well. Um, and now I'm like, great, my turn. <laughs> and if you don't like that, um, you want to say, well, Robert Jordan could have made the two rivers all white. He could have, mm -hmm. but he God. didn't. So okay. Just complimented me so, on my dress, and as you can clearly see, I'm sad. I just want to call me as it. something along the lines of a Shida Haran analog. For the it does make sense why it outlasted the breaking. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. you know, this is why I have Therese in the show because she's going to correct everything that. Hey, everybody! I'm wrong welcome about to the Dusty Wheel Show. What? Beam off challenge! Yay! Terrible, like baby face mounted on like a huge body. So like all <laughs> of a sudden, not other. just <laughs> a traditional <laughs> fantasy, right? There, there are sci-fi elements. And just a moment ago, kind of uh, Rafe tweeted something. So let me get my guests in here with me, and <laughs> probably let's, I would let's say get, let's put in talking. 70, 80 percent of the work. I got to be over the shoulder and be like, no.